Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. Today we're going to talk about rest and relaxation. The dictionary describes relaxation in the noun form as abatement or relief from bodily or mental work, effort, application, etc. Also, an activity or recreation that provides such relief, diversion, entertainment. Three, a loosening or slackening. Four, remission of strictness or severity. And in the verb form, to make less tense, rigid, or firm. To make lax, to relax the muscle. Two, to diminish the force of. Three, to slacken or abate as effort, attention, etc. Four, to make less strict or severe as rules, discipline, etc. to relax the requirements for a license. And five, to release or bring relief from the effects of tension, anxiety, etc. We are taught in the Bible that to ensure good health, we should rest in Christ and to rest our bodies. All through the book of Proverbs, we are cautioned that stress can affect our mental health and our bones. Psalm 212, in the last line, says, Happy are all who take shelter in Him. That can be translated as, At rest and relaxed are all who take shelter in Him, who is God. We can give everything to God, even our future. Two nights ago was a message at church. I watched it online from Baltimore. It was uh, from 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon Him. We can all personalize that verse. Every single one of us on planet Earth. I certainly have personalized it in my life. This week, as a matter of fact, I have uh, found a different apartment in the Brunswick area. I was supposed to moved to Topsom and had a place all picked out and I found another one um, in Brunswick and it's so tiny there's like no way I would ever ever move there except that it has uh, no apartments upstairs so it was worth the sacrifice for me to take it but I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of my stuff so you know what that's like especially you ladies the material things kind of grab us and I will be totally transparent with you and telling you that I tossed and turned the whole first night because I kept thinking of my beautiful dinette, dinette set that my sons gave me for one Mother's Day and uh, it's just very sentimental. So just thinking of ha having to get rid of so much of my stuff, maybe one third of my stuff, it was on my heart heavy and I just talked to God about it but I really didn't give it over him to him completely right at that moment. The very next morning, after I tossed and turned, God gave me a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, you know, the chapter about a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, and all those things. Well, he gave me in that chapter, there is a time to keep and a time to give away. And needless to say, it took all the pressure off my mind about giving my stuff away. God was in it, he was behind it, and he was going to make things okay. So now, that illuminates that verse to me personally in 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all my cares upon him and everything's going to work out okay. I don't even have to do the planning. I just have to go along for the ride with God. So beautiful about the Bible. Take the time to get to know some verses in the Bible. Let's see. And since we're on that subject, oh, about giving stuff away, that's what I'm talking about here. And since we're on that subject, have you thought about passing anything on to your kids and grandkids when you die? Trust me, if you take care of all of that stuff before you get too old, it will bring you mental rest and relaxation. I made sure I gave all mine a small amount of money when I had it. Plus, I have given them 
instead of Christmas burdens over the years. Special belongings of mine, treasures for them to remember me by. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've also put together um, a death portfolio for them so that they don't have to do all the dirty work when it's my time, when my time comes. The portfolio consists of doctors' names and phone numbers, account numbers for Time Warner, the electric company, the bank, insurance companies, etc. That has, has added very much to my mental rest and relaxation. I encourage you to get your affairs in order before you enter a nursing home way before. I'm just noticing something. I'm looking down at the, cal the camera, and last week I wasn't, and I realized that I have a pillow underneath me, so I hope you can see me better now. Contentment is not based on externals, but on what comes from God. Would you not agree that the biggest percentage of people you know base their contentment on external things like will they or their other half get a raise? Will they sell something they have been wanting to sell to get extra money? Will they get a promotion at work? And on and on. If their heart's desire is not fulfilled, then they are discontent, unhappy, unable to re relax or rest. It is all external. Listen to what the Bible says. There is no striving when you are content. You don't have to strive for it. Psalm 4.4. Listen to this. It says, Tremble. Give up sinning. The Amplified says, Commune with your hearts upon your beds and be silent. And in parentheses, Sorry for the things you say in your hearts. End of parentheses. Spend your night in quiet meditation. If you follow this advice, you will see that you will experience rest and relaxation. Would it kill anybody to give up TV or the computer for a few hours to spend it with God? We watch on TV the state that people are in when a hurricane or tornado hits their town. Do they run to their TV sets or computers for help when things like that happen? No. They start praying to God. People shouldn't put God on a shelf until catastrophic uh, events happen. Now, God sometimes leads us to doctors and therapists who can help us with these problems. Someone called me last week asking me about this very subject. Someone who tosses and turns all night long and has broken sleep night after night and is doing a number on his body. And believe me, I know all about that. That's right up my alley. So, <clears throat> I told him some of the things that I remembered from many, many years ago when I had the same problem with anxiety. And the doctor sent me to classes at the, a local hospital. And they taught me, they told me to get into yoga and things like that, or, or to God, one or the other. But there's also a thing for, there's yoga for Christians as well. So if you're a Christian and don't like the sound of yoga because it really pertains to self, you can get beyond that. You can you can get into these breathing exercises and not get into the full of it. Just do it in a way that would be comfortable for you. And so I told this person what I remembered about breathing. And I'll pass these things on to you as well. When you breathe in, you, you take a deep, deep breath. And when you breathe in, you bring, breathe in all good thoughts. Breathe in newness. And then when you exhale, you exhale all the pressure on your shoulders, all the unforgiveness toward people and people who have hurt you. Exhale that all out. And then when you breathe in again, you bring in, breathe in happiness and peace. And then when you exhale, you exhale worries about money, parents, children, grandchildren, bad relationships, and all of that. Breathe in again a deep breath. Breathe in blessed hope, new expectations, a new start, new goals. Exhale, exhale anything that you are struggling with. And this list can go on and on and on. And then have a funeral and burial for all those things that you exhale. And then give God your future.
Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. <clears throat> and this rejoicing in Him produces rest and relaxation that's divine. Stop and think of it. <clears throat> if you're rejoicing in the Lord, you're happy. And that just cause, comes with the territory. When you're in the Lord's territory, you're resting and you're relaxing. <clears throat> Pardon me. And this is a very important one. If you're having trouble sleeping, maybe you're falling asleep right away, but you only sleep an hour, and then you're up and tossing and turning. Try this. This I have tested. Don't allow yourself the liberty of thinking before you go to bed at night. And I am living proof that this works. Instead of thinking before you go to bed, allow yourself a few minutes during the day to think about those things that normally go through your head when you hit the pillow. And I know it's a good feeling. It's so natural to just want to lay your head on the pillow and to just think about your day's happenings and the good and everything, and unfortunately bad too. And you just want to go over all of that but what you need to do is to put up an imaginary stop sign. And this I have all in capital letters. I'm emphasizing this. Do not allow yourself to think for a millisecond. You may have to do this a few times until your brain gets the message. And it doesn't happen the first night that you try it. You have to train yourself and discipline yourself to do this every night without giving up. And the result will be that you go off to sleep within seconds of hitting the pillow and you don't wake up an hour later tossing and turning. You cannot even give in to the first thought. And yes, it's going to, even ten years after you do it, the thoughts are going to try to come. But you put up that stop sign. How do you do it? Invent your own way. You may have to blink your eyes. If the thought is coming, uh, you met somebody at the post office today and uh, learn news of the family. Just blink your eyes. Push that thought back. Push it away. Do not accept any thoughts once your head hits that pillow. Here's a good verse. Psalm 91.5 Some people have night terrors like I have had and a lot of people I know have them. Not exactly nightmares in your dream world, but night terrors and things it makes you feel like you're dying when you're sleeping. Psalm 91 5 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night. I say to you, claim this verse. Write it down on a piece of paper. Psalm 91 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night. Put it, tape it onto your bed if you have to. And let that be the last thing that you say before you go to bed. Ask God to help you through the night. Read this verse. Read this verse out loud to the atmosphere. <clears throat> Hang on to it. Believe in it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, I'm a little coughed up here. And from the internet, I have some uh, relaxation techniques which can reduce stress symptoms and help you enjoy a better life, especially if you have an illness. Let's see what it says. Relaxation techniques are a great way to help with stress management. Relaxation isn't just about a peace of mind or enjoying a hobby. Relaxation is a process that decreases the effects of stress on your mind and body. Relaxation techniques can help you cope with everyday stress and with stress related to various health problems such as cancer and pain. Now these from the net are put out by clinics and groups, but I'm not going to name their names because they're copyrighted, although I don't think they, they would have a problem at all. But uh, I have just chosen not to name their names, but they're from well-known places. Whether your stress is spiraling out of control or you've already got it tamed, you can benefit from learning relaxation techniques. Learning basic relaxation techniques is easy. They are often free or low cost, hold little risk, and can be done just about anywhere. Explore these simple relaxation techniques techniques and get started on de-stressing your life and improving your health. When faced with numerous responsibilities and tasks or the demands of an illness, relaxation 
techniques may take a back seat in your life, but that means you might miss out on the health benefits of relaxation. Practicing relaxation techniques can reduce stress symptoms by slowing your heart rate, lowering blood pressure, slowing your breathing rate, increasing blood flow to major muscles, reducing muscle tension and chronic pain, improving concentration, reducing anger and frustration, boosting confidence to handle problems. I have this little uh, story uh, that I, I took from one of my books or something. It was about one time that I had so many family pressures from my family members and I just couldn't shake them and I was in a mental tibby and I got an email from a friend that morning not knowing what I was going through and it was a picture of something funny and on the picture uh, it was one of those four words on the picture it's under the picture it said don't take life so seriously and I'll tell you that just grabbed me and I knew that God was behind that email because when I read it I realized it was true and I needed to just let it go because the situation would have a way of resolving itself and uh, I was just causing myself stress and God will do that for you in a way that's unique to you so what we need to do is to go to the Word of God and follow his advice rather than to get stressed out about things and this is from my um, founding a pastor in my ministry he's long gone for many Christians, following on to know the Lord is painstaking. To continue in the kingdom of God becomes, a, becomes burdensome, burdensome to them to the point of despair. This is, I guess, for Christians. This kind of attitude is in contrast to the words of the Apostle John in his first epistle. In quote, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 1 John 5.3 The Word of God is teaching us, regardless of our experience, that spiritual progress is not a drudgery, but a delight. God has promised us strength for our days, and His joy, and His joy, as the resource of that strength. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. Ezekiel 44.18b Could I read that one again? They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat, Ezekiel 44, 18b. Sweat is the result of excessive physical and emotional exertion. In the biblical context, it is illust illustrative of the energy of the mature man trying to accomplish the work of God and achieve the maximum amount of productivity in their souls, not through sweat, but rest. Bible quote, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Hebrews 4.11a Our understanding of a faith rest through Christ's finished work will assure us that ye shall never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1.8 Hebrews 4.11a 